it's going to be important that you sort of develop a bit of binomial distribution intuition. You want to know when you get your answers whether you're right or or wrong or whether it kind of makes sense or doesn't make sense. So we're going to run through some different uh, binomial distributions and look at what happens when we change the probability of success or failure. So the first one we're going to do is a classic flipping a coin heads or tails. Uh, now let's take a look at what a binomial distribution of a coin flip looks like. Um, here we have a binomial distribution. Now I'm going to flip this coin 10 times uh, and you can see that I've got 10 trolls. Uh, and you can see that the probability P of success is 0 0.5 because either it's got a half, a 50% chance of being heads and a 50% chance of being heads. What do we see? We see with our distribution that it is uh, symmetrical. Okay, we see that if I flip this coin 10 times, the most likely outcome is that I'll get five heads. Um, it's about a 25% chance that I'll get exactly five heads. There's approximately a 21-ish percent chance that I'll get four heads, and there's a same percentage chance, about 21%, that I'll get six heads. So what can I be pretty confident of? Well, 25% plus 21% plus 21%, uh, that's 67%. I have about a two-thirds chance that when I flip this coin 10 times, I'll get four five or six successes. Now, looking right here at the extremities, um, if I flip a coin 10 times, there's a practically 0% chance. It's, it's still there, there's still a chance, but there's a very, very, very small chance that I'm gonna get 10 heads from 10 coin flips. And there is the same chance that I'll get zero heads, in other words, 10 tails. And that's the key to why this is symmetrical either you're getting heads or tails, the probability of getting four heads is the same as getting six tails. They're the same thing. Okay, let's change it a little bit. I've got a dice, a six-sided dice, and um, six is a success and not a six is a failure. So we're going to roll the dice 10 times again, and we're going to change the probability. It's about 0.16 to get a 6. It's not exactly that, but approximately that. All right, so what do you see? In terms of our distribution, it's change. It's skewed. We call this type of skew a positive skew. I know that feels sort of backwards, but this is a positively skewed graph. Um, you can see that if I roll this dice 10 times, there's only like a point, there's a 0.17, 0.18 chance that I'll get zero sixes. There's actually a 33-ish percent chance that I'll get one six, and there's about a 28 percent chance that I'll get two sixes. So if I sort of think, well, out of 10, the probability that I get two sixes are this number plus this number plus this number, 0.17 plus 0.33, 0.5 plus 0.3, 0 0.8. There's like a 0.8 chance, there's an 80% chance that I'll get either 0, 1 or 2. So we can flip that around and we can say that there's about a 20% chance that I'll get more than two sixes. Um, now we can think about this in the other way. So we can skew this the other way. If we just say to ourselves, well, success is not rolling a six. The, if I roll a six, I lose. So the probability of success. So now we've just taken that graph and we've flipped it around on itself. And we said the probability of getting 10, 10 non-sixes, that's gonna be our success, is 0 0.17, 0 0.18, something like that. The probability of getting nine non-sixes is 0.34. So that's just the, the reverse of that. They're the same graph because they're considering the same phenomenon, just assuming different things are success or failure. What if we were to instead increase the trials? What if we had like 30 trials? What does that change about our graph? Let's, let's zoom in on our graph. So we got the 30 in there. Let's do our 30 trials. Okay, and we get something that looks like that. 
uh, 30 trials and the probability of success is 0 0.84. Just zoomed the y-axis a little bit so you can see here what that looks like. Let's push it back so that like success is actually rolling a six. You can see that the probability of rolling zero sixes in 30 trials, it's still kind of there, uh, 0 0.02. Uh, so there's like a 1% chance, a little less than a 1% chance that you're not going to roll any sixes out of 30 dice rolls. Um, and you can see that we get this little skew here. Now, it looks like there's like nothing here. I assure you there is. It's just that their probabilities are very, very small. So you can see as I zoom further in, but it's virtually impossible to roll 30 sixes from 30 dice rolls. So there is a number like down here, there is a little bar here, but it's so, so tiny. And we can do like a pack of cards here and we can say, you know, uh, if you pull a heart out of the pack, you win. Uh, I really want that to say 0.25, but it's not doing it for me. So 0.26 it is. There's an extra heart in there or something, I don't know. Uh, what can you see? Well, we're going to pull 30 cards out of the pack, pull it out, put it back in, pull it out, put it back in. You would expect across those 30 trials to have somewhere between seven and eight hearts. Now, you could get very unlucky and get zero hearts or one heart. You could get really lucky and get 30 hearts in a row because remember, we keep replacing it. But you can see that it's um it looks fairly symmetrical but it's not actually symmetrical because zero is the least you can get and this tapers off to here so even though it looks symmetrical around that seven and eight it's actually a positively skewed graph it it just tapers off and off and off and off and off and off and off to the incredibly lucky person who managed to get 30 hearts out of um 30 trials Okay, um, so we've gone through dice, we've gone through dice, we've gone through coins, we've gone through cards, but that, I hope, starts to develop a look at what these distributions might look like.